What's up everyone, I'm Black Marvin and today we're gonna make face plants sound like an analog synthesizer. Let's go. Here we are inside face plant and we're gonna make it sound like an old vintage analog synthesizer. So let's start by adding a wavetable and what, what we mean by analog, it, you see that here we can grab analog by uh, the, the analog module, the analog generator. Um, you have saw wave, square wave, that's a triangle, I believe, and that's a sine wave, all right? So that's analog in the sense of in old analog synthesizer, you wouldn't have uh, fancy wavetable set, but we, there, there was sampler, but not inside the synth. You had sampler for that, but you had like not fancy wavetable at the beginning. You have just all these, and then after some, the wavetable concept came, and there's some, there was some hybrid synthesizer like the uh, uh, Access Virus, which I I have just here, but the camera angle doesn't show it. But uh, the, so it, it's not even analog, but it's an hardware and it's using wavetables. So yeah, things have evolved a lot. And now there's some, uh, recently there's some analog synthesizer that, and you can import wavetables in them. That's crazy. And that's crazy expensive too, but <laughs> that's another discussion. But yeah, that, that that's kind of how things evolved. But it started with the analog wavetables. So uh, we have them here, um, but it's analog, but not so much in the sense that if we generate signal with that, it's gonna be pure sign, like digitally pure sign. When it too per it's it's too perfect. Okay, we we gotta make it less perfect. And how are we gonna do that? Uh, we can go and start. Uh, we there's a Ghost Act Analog Wave Tables Volume One, but I'm gonna use Ghost Act Analog Wave Tables Volume Two. And in there, we have consoled and preamped. What does that mean? It's that these uh, signal have been ran through co consoles e and or preamps. Okay, so here you, you saw the, the analog uh, saw wave. Here we have a different saw wave. All right, it's, uh, you see, there's, there's a, a bit of movement, but it's not wavetables meant to be sweeped and, and moved a lot, but it, it's for their harmonic content. So it's just variations of saw wave. And you can listen here. It's all gonna sound like a saw, but with different different versions of it. And yeah, so those were all saw-ish wavetables, just variations of saw, and they've been ran some, like I said, either a console or preamp. Um, and there's some sine wave, all right? But just different versions of sine wave. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, that was the only sine wave I, I have in this folder, but there's a square one, squarish one. It's kind of a hybrid between, There's this one is square two. We're gonna use one of these as the building block of our sound. So it's gonna sound less perfectly pure, digitally pure. So this is warm tape. We're gonna compare it to the uh, analog saw wave here and you can see the difference. This is the digital saw. So there's it's less crispy, but less crispy can equal warm and for the crispiness, you can use another building block. We can use another wavetable. If I go, if I mess with the frame here, I can get a bit more uh, high frequency content. I'm gonna get another group and another wavetable, and I'm gonna go for that high frequency content. So I just moved the face a bit too because I, I didn't like how it sounded. There, were, I feel like there's some a bit of uh, conflict. Doesn't sound good, but if you move the face, it, it, they blend uh, in a better way. And the warm tape one, I'm gonna drop it by one octave so it gives more low frequencies.
that that's that's a nice little movement here in the frame so we might we might articulate that later let's see if i can add a third one a third wavetable so for the third one i i went into the vintage extracted uh, folder uh difference here is the, if you've seen the console and preamp and the extracted one it's it's more uh it's either a variations of saw or sign but these are more a bit freestyle they're just snaps again of vintage uh, synthesizers <laughs> Now we have a nice thick spectrum. I might just try the third one on an octave lower. Sounds good. Now we're all set with the wavetables and that's the that's the beauty of sound design because I'm just getting inspired. So I'm choosing building blocks. I can go in either direction and that sounds good. Now we're all set with the wavetables and that's the beauty of sound design. We can go in, in either direction. I was not looking for like a doing a bass or a lead in anything. I just want a synth sound, but it might be a bit too perfect still. Uh, we're gonna emulate the pitch of a... Um, it might just be, a, a, again, too perfect because on analog synthesizers, sometimes the pitch is not 100% perfect and it creates some sort of drift and it, 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 it can be pleasing to the ear. So I'm gonna take an LFO. I'm gonna remove the re-trigger I'm gonna assign it here. I'm gonna right click and I it's gonna be hyper subtle, super, 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 super subtle. So it's 0 0.10. If you're really crazy, you can go with 0 0.15. But, and if you want more conservative, you can go with 0 0.7. But I'm gonna make sure you first notice it and then after we can dial it to a more subtle effect. So it's, it's gonna affect the pitch like this, but just, just a bit. And you want it maybe a bit a bit faster. Oh, so we hear we hear it. And that might be a bit too much. So that's clean. And probably here is gonna be good. Cool, 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 cool. Perfect. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe just driving a bit the wavetable with some distortion. A bit of overdrive. Usually overdrive is good. And sometimes the spread is nice if you want to give it just nice stereo presence, but not too much. And... I want to apply this similarly to others. So I go control and left click, I drag, and then it's copied. But I, I want to dial in the drive as we go. Same thing. I'm not going to spread everything though. Perfect. And now we're going to add a ladder filter. And if you are not familiar with the ladder filter, I recommend you go check out the video I did on that because this, this filter brings uh, harmonic saturation to the table. And we want that again. We want to emulate the circuitry of a synthesizer. Not too much, honestly. So we are set up with the ladder filter. There's a ni nice color I like. We're gonna set up an envelope for the filter cutoff. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up two macro, one for the filter cutoff here. And you just got to make sure if you want the maximum control, you put it all the way up and make sure it corresponds to all the way up on the cutoff. 
and that doesn't necessarily mean 100% that you see 68% were already maxed out. So we have like the very, very, uh, the best control over the macro. And the second macro, we're gonna link it to the envelope debt here. So we gotta make this uh, 0%. So there's no more envelope. And we're gonna make this control the envelope. So that corresponds 100%. So I'm all set. And if I want to push, let's say on the fly, I want uh, more envelope, I can access the macro here. All right, we're gonna put now some distortion. I'm not sure if I'm gonna put before the filter or after the filter, but we're just gonna use our ear and see how it sounds. So distortion, usually for what we wanna achieve, overdrive or saturate are good options. Fallback maybe, but uh, these, two, these are too harsh for the type of sound we want. So two options here, either you get your mix 100% and you just find that sweet spot on the drive where it pushes the sound, but it doesn't like damages the sound. So no, that might be a bit here. So you can either go like this or so that's one option or you can crank, you crank it really uh, hard and you dial it you dial the mix back a bit. So you have 50% dry signal and 50% driven signal. I like it that way, I'm gonna keep it that way. With the dynamic knob, with the dynamics knob, you can really uh, either preserve or smash the dynamics of your sound. Uh, usually I don't touch it much, but if you go all the way uh, to the right, you're gonna hear really the sound almost like eating up some, some kind of ceiling. And all the way to the right, it, it, it preserves more dynamics. So what the distortion does, it's gonna act as a unifier uh, or a gluing effect uh, because you have three different sources, three different wavetables, and now they come through all the same effect and they, they have all that same distortion applied. So it's, it's gonna, act as a unifier a bit. Another effect that is not necessarily a mandatory, but I would I would go with the disperser here uh, just to give a bit of bottom, but we'll see. It really depends on some, on some sounds. It, it sounds really good and so on some other sounds, it doesn't behave like I, I wish it did, but uh, let's see what it does here. I like the, the bottomness that it brings, but it sounds a bit too artificial because there's there's too much, it's too noticeable, and we're kind of drifting away from that, that uh, vintage analog sound we wanted to emulate. So I'm gonna stay here, I think. Yeah, so it's now it's just adding a bit of bottom. We're gonna activate the polyphony for the lane so uh it's what it does it's that each is going to treat each voices separately we, there's no problem here but if, if you have lots of voices lots of unison and lots of effect and you activate the polyphony it can be a bit cpu hungry but for what we have here there's no problem next up will be a filter but basically we're going to use it like pretty much like we are uh having an eq inside of a uh, face plant so, and since I don't own the Carve EQ or the Slice EQ, that's that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the notch here, the bell, uh, and I'm just gonna see if there's some undesired frequency here, and I'm gonna remove them. You see here that it's kind of too too plasticky, so I don't want that. Just a bit. Next up is a uh, reverb because it's a bit dry. Let's face it. Uh, 
I'm gonna dampen it a bit. And by, you know, decay, dampen, size, uh, you're really kind of changing the depth of the room. So it's really up to, you, to your taste. I like that when the cutoff is low, it's always like resonating, just starting to feel like an acid sound, but not quite. It's just like really warm. Now we could be done for the effects section, depending on what we want, we could also add flanger chorus, but I'm not really interested in these at the moment. Uh, not that they're not good, just I, I like the pure patch. Uh, but I'm gonna grab the ensemble and I'm gonna try to have like that 80s synth effect with the ensemble. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the spread here because uh, one thing you, you need to keep in mind is the correlation. If I spread too much on the stereo, they're gonna see some red and that's, that's information we're losing because we're too wide and we don't want that. So there's too much spread here. That would also correspond, I can show you in another meter. You can check in I can show you in another meter, you can check in anything that shows correlation. It's okay, it's mostly when the envelope hits. It's okay, it's mostly when the filter hits, but I, I, I'd rather keep it safe like this. And finally, at the end of the effect chain, I'm gonna use the limiter just to make just to rebalance the gain and just make sure I'm I'm not going over 0 dB and if you have a small like 2 or 3 dB headroom that that's okay now we're done with the effect chains we're done with the wavetables and there's just two small details we can add just to give a bit more of analog feeling one would be a noise so I'm gonna add a group and a noise So I'm going to put the slope like this, uh, there's too much, so I'm going to put uh, less gain on it. Yeah, that's, that's good. Also, what I like to do is filter the noise. What we can do too is give ourselves a macro. Uh, yeah, that was about here. And finally, rename the macro. So if I want noise, I can have it. If I don't, you know, if I have less. So now with the macro, I have control on the noise. And the last thing we can do is a small offset in the pitch just right here. Maybe four up, seven up, maybe three down. Again, it's just like to have, in the end, it, it, it does kind of balance. So again, it's to get that uh, not perfectly on pitch effect. And it kind of, you know, it's it, it's subtle, so it's not going to mess, mess everything up. And uh, you could even set up a macro or just cancel it if you don't like. But me, yeah, I think it's gonna add some depth and some to, some organicness to the sound. And for the final listen of the sound, I chose the Ghost Act MIDI ARP E5 from the uh, Ultimate Producer Bundle 2020. It's one of the ARPs, and it sounds like this.
So that's how you bring an analog feeling inside Faceplant. I hope that helped. I hope you're gonna create a lot of vintage analog sound. There's more Faceplant content coming your way. If you don't wanna miss it, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. I'm Black Marvin and I will see you in another video. Cheers.